Hey, welcome back to the Build It Basement. Today we're taking another look at the Chaotic Labs Tap version two. Uh, this time though, I'm just looking to solve a couple issues. A lot of people have contacted me uh, and actually Chaotic Lab uh, reached out to me, asked me if I could do a quick video to kind of show how I install a tap or CNC tap on my Voron printer. That being said, I've gone ahead, I've actually removed a gantry off of one of my printers so we could look at everything really closely and not have things in the way. Uh, before we do that though, I'm going to jump over into the Chaotic Lab website. And just real quick, just so everybody knows it, uh, chaoticlab.xyz is where you'll find this. There's lots of good information about the product. Uh, if you have a version one tap, I don't necessarily believe you should go out and buy a version two. However, if you are buying a new CNC tap, buying the version two, uh, would be a good idea. It is slightly better. It's got a couple different things. It snaps back a little bit harder. Um, the magnet setup is a little bit different. It's more in line with the actual uh, printed tap, um, but really nice item either way. So with that, all that being said, let's, uh, let's jump all back. And here we are. All right. So uh, what I have right now in front of me is a CNC tap version two and one of the issues, well, first of all, let's go over some of the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a 1.3, a 1.5, a 2, and a 2.5 driver. So you're going to need some drivers like this. Uh, you may want some tweezers. That's up to you. I like these blunt nose ones for things like this. Um, I've gone ahead and I've removed a few screws. Uh, so right here on the front, we have four screws. But before we remove all those, we need to remove the optical sensor here on the rear. Uh, the reason we do that is because it is very, very sensitive. Very sensitive optical sensor. So I got one screw left in that and then remove that out. That's using the, uh, what is that? The 1.3, uh, yes. So a little bit different there. Now pull this straight out like that, set it aside gently. And then I'm gonna come over to here and I'm gonna grab my 1.5. Take out that remaining screw. Again, there would be four, one, two, three, four, but in terms of saving some time here, so everybody's not having to watch everything happen in real time, I've gone ahead and removed the other ones in advance. So all that being said, um, so at this point, I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to be careful about my linear rail underneath. So I want to grab it by the sides here where the, the belts will actually take. And I'm going to basically just pull that off like that, hold that on with my thumb, make sure it stays where it is. Now, what you'll see a lot of times is right here, the screw has fallen out during shipping. Um, on the back side of these screws, what they've done is they have installed, and they're really hard to see, but little O-rings to kind of hold these in. Uh, but, you know, these are shipping from far away uh, in a lot of cases, depending on where you are in the world, uh, maybe multiple times. And those tend to fall out. There's not much they can do in terms of design, uh, simply because they need to be able to move freely in this front hole, but they also need to be snug and snook them into that rear linear rail when you go to mount it. So this is the best um, they came up with, but you know, it, it is what it is, it has its limitations. So now that we've done this, we got to this point, we've gotten this screw and it might be multiples that fall out, or maybe you don't have that issue at all and you just want to install your tap into your printer. The first thing I like to do is I like to take my, uh, actually it's a two that goes here, take my oh, one and a half, my mistake again, take my one and a half and yeah, one and a half and pull this screw out a little bit. Just enough so that that can't fall. So now I have less to worry about. All right, so that can't fall out anymore. Now that I have that where it is, I can now take my tap. I can line it up on my gantry like so. That's good. Good video right there, right? All right. And then I'm going to take my larger. I'm just going to start these a little bit. Not going to go very tight on these just yet. I'm just kind of actually just starting them in. We'll, we'll tighten them down here in a second. We'll take the one that we lost during shipping. And we'll just set that one right there for right now. So while we're doing that, I'm going to snug these bottom ones down like so. Now I'm going to snug this last one down like so. And then I'm going to take 
my 1.5. I'm going to adjust this back in just a little bit. Just so I can get around it. I'm going to keep my thumb right on that carriage. Pretty important that you do that. And then... Install that last one. Clean up that one. Clean up this one. And tighten up that one. So now those are all tight. All right. So the next step I want to do is I actually want to loosen this back up again. I just want that head to be proud. I just want that to be proud so that it can't go down. Okay. So that's good the way it is. And I want to install the belts. So I've got a couple small sections of belts here. I'm going to show you how I like to install them. Um, you might have another method that works better for you. This is the method that has worked best for me. Uh, I put a few of these on at this point. If I loosen this up, just so it's on there like that, you can loosen up the SI as well. Um, but basically you're gonna take this belt and you're gonna to wanna to basically give it a little bit of a peel that way. So you wanna to try, to, to try to give it a little bit of a work backwards so that it has a way to bend. If you don't have that, you're going to have difficulty. So now that I have it like that, I can come in here and I can take my belt and get behind it like so, and just kind of feed a little bit through at a time. Like so. Like that. And then I'm going to just basically leave that like that. I'm going to take my second belt. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give a little bit of a bend right here. I'm going to put it through the back again. Give it a little bit of a push. Sometimes you got to give it a pretty decent push to get it to go through. I'm kind of working around a camera here makes it a little bit more difficult to do. But basically you want to get behind this belt as well. Sometimes you get a little finagling here to do. Again, I'm trying to do this, and not block off the camera view as I do it. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. But anyways, I want to get behind this. This is the gist of this. While I push it, I don't want it to go behind that carriage. I want it to come forward like so and once I get enough I can pull it and pull it out like that and then I want to mark them up about the same like that and then I'm going to take this I'm going to twist it just a little bit pull out my belt underneath it so they're both like that double check that these are the same length and then tighten that down there you go so once I have that, I could trim these back if I wanted to. I'm not going to install the other side because it's pretty much the same as doing the first side. I'm going to now uh, tighten back down that screw that we have here. And this is kind of like an important time. This is, this is where you want to be pretty careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one finger underneath it like so. I'm going to put my top on like this. Like that. And then I'm going to install my four screws. Oh, 
was going to. Uh, a little bit off. So once you have all four screws in there like that for the front, I'm not gonna put them all in right now. I'm trying to make this video pretty quick. I'm gonna flip this around. You're gonna reinstall this guy. And then last but not least, once you get to that point, you can go ahead and mount your, your part on there. So that's pretty much soups nuts, how I install a CNC tap, how I get around that one little issue where you might have a screw that's fallen into it. Um, but that's it, it's, it's really easy to install. It's a good little piece, it's a good little part. Uh, hopefully, if you're if you're wondering about buying a CNC tap, you do consider the Kaoc Lab version. Uh, I've had no issues with it. I like it quite a bit. Um, yeah, simple as that. So that's it. I mean, we put it in. We found that little screw that was kind of missing inside there. It was janking around a little bit. Um, there's not a lot really to it. Um, you're not really building anything. You're you're disassembling. You're being very careful when you disassemble it because they 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 frown on disassembling the whole unit. That's only because they don't want you to break anything. Um, but sometimes you got to actually get get in there and fix some things, or not necessarily fix some things, but actually work them out so they work out for you. Uh, putting those belts on with that front cover on, uh, if if you can do it, you know, kudos to you. I just can't do it. So I wanted to let everybody know how I do it because some people have a lot of difficulty with it. So. All that being said, appreciate your time. Hopefully you like this video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Go ahead and give this a thumbs up if you like this video. Check out my other content and I will see you next video.